Good morning, guys. Today is the 19th of March. Being trapped in the house, I'm kind of losing track of the days. It is Thursday, that's for sure. And it is a beautiful, bright, sunny day. It's supposed to be high in the 70s. So I hope all of you can get outside for a while today while there's no rain. Maybe go on a nature hunt. See what you can find that you haven't noticed before. Madeline and I took a walk the other day after it had rained and we found a hay bale on one of the empty lots where they're gonna build. And there were some uh, really cool looking mushrooms growing on it and we took a picture. So if you have access to a camera or to a phone with a camera, um, you can go on that nature hunt and try to take some pictures of the cool things that you see. If you don't, that's okay too. You can make a list, you could make little sketches, um, or you could just think about it and that's fine too. But if you do get some good pictures, um, Try to share those with me. Um, if we get the Microsoft Office set up with the collaboration, that will be a spot where we can share those too. So hopefully by next week, we'll all be um, somewhat familiar with it and ready to put that to some use. Um, okay, so we talked about reconstructing the United States the other day and Today we're going to talk a little bit more about settling in the West and in that land that was new territory but wasn't really prospering yet. So remember um, the Kansas Territory, Nebraska, um, it ended up leading to Colorado, um, Wyoming, the Dakotas, that area. So here, let's see, I've got a map of our United States. That one's a road map. We don't want to see that one. We go with these. Okay, so we live over here, and the area we're talking about is over here in the Great Plains. So our plains, our prairies, our grasslands. Remember that. Grasslands means it's a land mostly of grass. There's not a whole lot of trees around, um, not a whole ton of resources. So we've got people moving west of the Mississippi trying to settle that land with the Homestead Act, and they don't have a whole ton to use once they get there. Remember, they can't just run to Walmart or they can't go to Home Depot and buy lumber and siding to build a new house. They have only what they brought with them in their wagons and what they can find on their new land. So one group of people who came to settle over there were freed slaves. So we have our reconstruction, our slaves are free, they're still not being treated fairly. The Homestead Acts did say that the people who were eligible to qualify for that you could be an immigrant to the United States, you could be a freed slave, you could be a woman, but you had to be the head of the household. And you had to be over 21, and you had to have never taken up arms against the Union. So that basically means that if you fought for the Confederate Army, you are out. You're not getting approved for the Homestead Act. But all of these families who are now freed, who were held in slavery, are eligible. And so many of them went, and there was one named Benjamin Singleton. He was from Tennessee. And um, he advertised amongst the South um, to come with him to Kansas. And they settled. And... It says, rumors spread among black Southerners that the government was giving ex-slaves plots of land in Kansas between 20,000 and 40,000 exodusters, that's what they named themselves, or history has named them, um, a nickname recalling the Hebrew exodus from Egypt, journeyed to Kansas in 1879. They arrived in wagons, boats, and even on foot. Blacks established 40 towns in the Great Plains and bought 20,000 acres of land in Kansas. But for many, the West did not fulfill their hopes. The dry conditions of the plains made farming difficult. 
After a string of failed harvests, many moved back east. Those who remained often confronted the same racist policies they had hoped to leave behind in the South. So what that means is it's not easy to farm on the Great Plains if you don't have good resources. And the climate is arid, which means it's very dry. And we have here one of the maps that I showed you is a climate map. So we can see using our key that the humid temperatures are in green, which means moist. Uh, but what we're concerned about is over here in our Great Plains. So Kansas has um, some good farming area, but it also has some not. We've got all the yellow is arid, so Kansas has all three colors on it. So it just depends on where your plot of land is. Um, Oh, are you okay? You want to say hi to my friends? Say hi. <laughs> okay. Now, in the 1880s, the late 1880s, the government decides to open Oklahoma. They open the Oklahoma Territory to be settled. And, um, well, this is a video we're making for them to watch. Do you want to say hi? <laughs> okay, so on the morning of April 22nd, 1889, as many as 100,000 people lined up along the southern border of Kansas and the northern border of Texas. Carriages, wagons, horse carts, and bicycles crowded wheel to wheel. In Arkansas City, Kansas, 15 southbound yeah. trains waited yeah. in the station with cars jammed so full, passengers yeah. perched on yeah. roofs yeah. and platforms. Uh, that is where Grandma's friends live. Texas? Yes, we have family in Texas. Okay, so all of these people are lining up because Oklahoma is first come, first serve. So think about Black Friday shopping when they have the best deals for the new video game system and people are lined up overnight, camped out in the parking lot because when they run out, they're out. So if you get there first, you get the land. Now they had the same hardships as our exodusters had um, about 10 years before and it was very dry. Um, they didn't have all the technology that we have today. So, basically every member of the family had to work for it, whether you were a child, whether you were a wife, whether you were a husband. So this is just kind of um, a list of some of the responsibilities of the wives or the mamas um, for these settlers. A huge burden of the labor fell on wives. Women mended and sewed, milked the cows, churned the butter, and cooked and cleaned without the aid of running water. They had to go fetch water in pails. They might have a well if they could dig one. Um, otherwise, they would hopefully have a stream that they chose to settle near. Madeline, I need you to move, please. They also looked after the children and helped with field work during busy times. To prepare the land for planting, farmers cut the native tall grasses and broke up the dense sod beneath. Unfortunately, this stripped the ground of its natural defenses. The soil now had nothing to hold it together or shield it from the bitter dry winds that swept the plain. When the rains ended, the naked topsoil baked in the sun. A single gust of wind could carry away tons of once fertile ground in a cloud of dust, leaving behind acres of parched, barren desert.